very good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Ashing Sunny Veer Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Opposition calls the government to reclaim 98 million US dollars paid to Airbus. Government plans to rehabilitate 100,000 kilometers road network. News in detail. The opposition today urged the government to claim from Airbus the 98 million US dollar cancellation fee that was paid by their government to cancel three leases under the controversial 2.6 billion refleeting deal that was signed in 2013. Thus, these views came from the former Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe while addressing the parliament today morning. Addressing the parliament yesterday, JVP leader Anura Kumar Adisanayake raised a series of questions on the controversial airlines and airbus deal. In response, leader of the House, Minister Dinesh Gunawardana yesterday added that the government will give a detailed statement to parliament today regarding the Sri Lankan Airlines airbus bribery case. The MP Anura Kumar Adisanayake queried as to who the chairman and CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines between 2012 and 2013 were when the alleged incident took place and who was on its board of directors. Hence, today the Tourism and Aviation Minister Prasanna Ranatunga replied to these questions. Also, Prasanna Ranatunga assured that an independent, fair and impartial inquiry on the issue will take place as per the directives of the President, even though it was delayed during the good governance regime. Meanwhile, addressing the parliament today, former Prime Minister Ronald Vikramasinghe urged the government to reclaim the cancellation fee that his alliance-led government had to pay in cancelling the three leases of the deal. He further added that a French court last Friday approved Airbus to pay nearly 4 billion euros in fines to Britain, France and the US to settle corruption cases parked by suspicious equipment sales and that Sri Lanka should also receive the fines. The Cabinet of Ministers has given the nod for the development of an optional road network of 100,000 kilometres to facilitate a higher level access to the main highways and expressways. This was announced at the weekly Cabinet press briefing held at the Government Information Department yesterday. Thus, the roads to be developed will be identified based on the fact such as not been renovated at all for the previous 10 years, the number of families utilizing the recognized roads and the access to educational, medical and market facilities utilizing the road. Approval of the Cabinet of Ministers was granted for the proposal submitted by the Minister of Roads and Highways for the implementation of the proposed program with the participation of the provincial councils and for the implementation of certain components identified in the projects implemented at present for development of roads under the foreign aids under this proposed project as well. Meanwhile, during yesterday's media briefing, it was also announced that the Cabinet approval was given for the additional provision of 367 billion rupees needed for the settlement of unpaid bills in last year and for accounting the expenditure on development projects implemented with funds obtained from the foreign sources which are not within the debt limits. Moving on, a request which has been made by Orana, one of the world's largest Denmark fruit juice producers, to establish a fruit processing plant within two acres of land obtained from the industrial park in Pannala was approved. The prospective investor has planned to invest 1.5 million US dollars under the first phase of the proposed project, while 30 job opportunities are expected to have generated under the phase. TJ Lanka reported solid performance for the quarter ended in December last year, sustaining the momentum it gained more than two years ago as the company pushed its top and bottom lines further ahead. With manufacturing operations in Sri Lanka and India, TJ is one of the region's largest textile manufacturers and supplies fabric to some of the best international brands across the world and TJ Lanka is a public quoted company with 39% public ownership. Sales of TJ Lanka for the period grew by 15% to 26.3 billion rupees with revenue for the third quarter alone by 5% to 8.9 billion rupees. The company reported earnings of 1.02 rupees a share or 718.9 million rupees for the three months compared to earnings of 78 cents or 550.9 million rupees in the corresponding quarter last year, registering a 31% year-on-year -year growth in bottom line. 
On the basis of these results, TJ Lanka has proposed a dividend of 1.3 rupees to shareholders in respect of the third quarter of 2019-2020. TJ Lanka CEO Pubudu De Silva, whose appointment became effective in the third quarter of the year, said that long-term strategies adopted by the group and economies of scale from expanding capacity have positively impacted performance during the quarter. The Sri Lankan Tourism Promotion Bureau, in partnership with the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Sweden, arranged the participation of Sri Lankan destination management companies at Adventure 2020 in Vilnius, Lithuania last week. The Adventure Travel Fair in Lithuania is considered to be one of the leading international travel fairs in the Baltic region and its theme for this year was Health, Tourism, Luxury or Necessity. The three-day fair, which was held from the 23rd to 26th of January, attracted more than 320 exhibitors and approximately 30,000 visitors. The Sri Lanka Pavilion was declared open by Ambassador of Sri Lanka in Lithuania with residents in Sweden, Sudanta Ganega Maharachi and Consul for Sri Lanka in Lithuania, Eligius Burgess. During his remarks, Ambassador Ganega Maharachi appreciated the keen interest and efforts of the Sri Lankan destination management companies to promote Sri Lanka as a unique travel destination. He further requested them to design attractive tour packages complemented by diverse travel experiences such as wellness tourism, culinary tourism, adventure tourism and sustainable tourism. Ambassador Ganega Maharachi, together with the Sri Lankan travel industry representatives also met with the President of Lithuanian Tourism Chamber, Zidri Gavilin. She stressed the importance of frequent interactions between the Sri Lankan destination management companies and the Lithuanian travel agencies to understand the latest developments in the Sri Lankan travel industry and changing travel trends in the Baltic region. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Ambassador of Delegation of EU to Sri Lanka, Dennis Chaibi, stresses that Sri Lanka must further strategize its trade policy concerning the termination of GSP Plus facility, Brexit and increasing competition from neighboring competitors such as Bangladesh and Vietnam. He made these observations at the 25th Annual General Meeting of the National Chamber of Exporters held in Colombo recently. Now, what is the future of GSP Plus in Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka has now become an upper middle income country according to World Bank standards. So in 2019, the average GDP per capita, non-purchasing power parity in absolute terms, was just above $4,000. That means that it triggers from the 1st January 2020, a three-year transition where GSP Plus can still be benefited from by the exporters, but it will expire in 2023. What does it mean? It means that during the next three years, we will continue to implement it, provided the conditions are met. But it's also important to keep GSP Plus for these three years and to maximize, because what you don't want is to not benefit from it beforehand, before its usual time. That would be a very negative signal to uh, importers in Europe, to potential investors. So the value of signal is perhaps even bigger than the value of the exports themselves through GSP Plus. Sri Lanka will have to negotiate its way with Brexit and it needs to be in a good position to trade that. And that reinforces my assumption that Sri Lanka is at the crossroad in terms of a trade strategy. It really needs to come up with a strategy to face these incredible challenges. Speaking further, Dennis Chaibi highlighted that it would be crucial for Sri Lanka to maintain access to the EU market under good conditions, with the EU enacting a number of bilateral trade agreements with countries such as Indonesia, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Chile and New Zealand. It's very important for Sri Lanka to keep access to the EU market under good conditions because the EU has innovative free trade agreement with Canada, with Japan, very innovative, very far-reaching. The EU is finalizing an agreement with Mexico, it has signed with Singapore and Vietnam, it is negotiating with Australia, New Zealand, Chile, Indonesia, Tunisia. What does it mean? That means that in the general global value chain, the EU will have the biggest network of trade preferential arrangements, which means that you want to have access to a country that has such an array of trade uh, agreements. It is essential for the global growth. 
Mastercard recently announced the official launch of its priceless Sri Lanka campaign, making Sri Lanka the first destination in South Asia to be recognized and celebrated by the highly popular campaign. Dedicated to bringing consumers closer to their passions, Sri Lanka is the latest destination to be added to Mastercard's priceless cities platform with over 40 cities and destinations participating in the platform. Priceless Cities is a program available exclusively to Mastercard cardholders and provides access to unforgettable experiences in over 40 cities. Among the other global experiences on offer are the Singapore F1 races with behind-the-scenes access, helicopter tours of the Great Wall in China, exclusive dining experiences in Prague or ballet experiences in New York City. This will allow MasterCard cardholders to tick off multiple activities within a single country, saving them from the trouble of travelling to different countries. We've been working with our teams all across the world to promote Sri Lanka as a tourist destination and we want more high-end customers to come and experience Sri Lanka as a destination to travel and to stay. So in pursuit of that itself, we have got Sri Lanka listed as one of the priceless cities and Sri Lanka is the first priceless cities in South Asia. We do have New York, we do have London and Dubai and Singapore and Paris, but in South Asia, Sri Lanka becomes the first priceless city. So there's a lot of focus and attention to promote tourism in Sri Lanka. To make our viewers aware on the stock performances for the past week and its developments for the coming week, now a subject expert at First Capital Holdings would join us in bringing you the usual weekly report. The benchmark ASPI continued its positive momentum from the previous week. However, on Monday, the index remained broadly flat and gained a mere one point, whilst 47% of the day's turnover was concentrated on parcel trades made in banking counters, commercial bank and nation's trust bank. Amidst recording the lowest volumes in over seven months. On Wednesday, the index gained on the price appreciations from the trades made in big cap Ceylon Tobacco and Singa Sri Lanka. Moreover, on Thursday, the index gained through price increases made in Dialogue, Carsons and Brown Investments. Throughout the week, foreign selling continued to dominate on diversified counter John Keyes Holdings and banking counter Commercial Bank. On expectation of company earnings portraying an upturn in most counters, we expect the positive momentum to continue in the market along with moderate activity levels. Nonetheless, foreigners are likely to show selling pressure in the upcoming week as well. We expect the selling pressure to subsidize with the release of company earnings. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 5.74 points to close at 5,942.53, and the S&P SL20 dropped 4.21 points to close at 2,835.35. The turnover was 417 million rupees, and over 18 million shares were traded. Up next are forex trades. And that's all the news for today. Send us your views, comments and ideas via our email address and our hotline. And also log into our Facebook page to be alert on the latest updates. Join us tomorrow with Biz Roundup. Until then, take care. Have a good night.